I'm now going to uh, make the uh, coupling rods. Uh, this is one of the etches and I need to cut out these as a pair and solder them together and those as a pair and the uh, the bosses. This is just as the instructions. What I have noticed though is that the, um, the holes, um, some of them are slightly oversized. They're about five, five thou oversized on the um, Slater's bushes. So I'm going to have to be very careful to get those lined up perfectly. Um, normally I prefer them to be a bit undersized so I can ream them out. But in this case, uh, they're already to size so I'm going to as I say, have to get, be very careful to get them lined up. So um, I'm going to just cut the... I'll do them one pair at a time. Just nick them out. Big bosses go on there, and let's see other one. So I'll do this one first, and see how we get on from there. At this stage, I need to just cut out, just to file it, to get the the tabs cut off. That's as much as I'm going to do at this stage uh, to get them all to this all of this particular rod to that stage and then um, do the next one. This is where this this vice really comes in useful. Um, as I explained I've had the teeth the serrations ground off on it so now it, it doesn't mark the um, anything when it grips up when it gets hold of it when it, in the jaws. It's just a case of taking the pips off from the etchings at this stage. It was handy in, in my working life. I was um, in precision engineering and I used to get little bits of jobs done at work um, to help me. And that's, a, that's where I got these uh, jaws ground. And as long as I don't grip anything too tightly in them, They'll, they'll not mark up and they'll, they'll last indefinitely more or less. So I'm now going to solder the, uh, the two halves of the coupling rods together. And the, the, it's a very simple little tool that I've got for doing this. But I, I use my resistance soldering uh, iron for the, for the job. And I, basically, I've got my metal plate, which is, is the earth for the soldering iron. And that's got a size hole in it. Um, in the base, in the work surface base, there's also the same size hole there. And I assemble the three, the three parts in line them through the earth hole, through the
through the hole in the plate and then so that I know I now know that that is perfectly in line that's the hole that's that's going to might be a problem it's about seven or eight thou oversize on the um, bush on the crank pin bush but uh, I'll see how I go and and all I do is put another size hole uh, drill shank into the uh, other hole in the coupling rod so if I just fan these out now I'll put the boss on the, on there afterwards but um, if I just fan them out now and I lift this up and get some uh, solder cream on um, not not really necessary to um, to solder it all to get everything soldered up at this stage but I need to get the the alignment in place so a, a little blob of solder cream And then squeeze those down and then another blob on the top there Right. Can now take this out and um, there we are. That hope, hopefully, now is soldered together. Just another little blob of. I mix and match this. Um, I find this the car is very good, but uh, I mix and match with other stuff which I got a long time ago from Squires, which is which I can smear on. And so either of them, they both seem very good. Um, I've no preference for for either of them really. I'll just now if I can find my tweezers. Um, see if I can get the Just um, burn this one on. You can dress all the pips off afterwards. 
There we are. One down. Right, so if we clean, we can file this, clean this one up and um, file it up now. So unfortunately I forgot to switch on the um, the camera apart from a few stills over the next bit. So uh, you're going to have to listen to me while you look at this. But this, this photograph is just of the rods completed. When I'd finished the, the four separate sections I just ran through a taper brush just to take any solder out of the, uh, the holes and clean them up. And then drilled out the, um, the pivot hole between the rods to the size of the rivet and um, and then I put them together with size drills and um, I must admit I was very pleasantly surprised they, they lined up perfectly as you can see in this photograph this is just as they were just as I assembled them after I'd finished trimming them off so um, so really the next stage was to put the rivet in in the pivoting hole and um, and then we were ready to start uh, really with the next stage. Well we've now got the wheels ready and the coupling rods ready to carry on. Uh, with the wheels as I explained I've as you can see I've Got uh, if I can just get them. There you can see the the small wire soldered to the outside and soldered to the middle. Uh, I've also tapped them 10 ba and fitted the um, uh, the the original bushes. Tapped them and fitted them now in reverse and just put a, a, a plain washer on there. The coupling rods I've built up. Um, they're in line. Now that <clears throat> these holes are about four or five thou oversize on these bushes, they might be a bit sloppy. I don't know yet. Um, it's really important that these are in line um, with each other. If you're building a rigid chassis, uh, it's even more important that these are absolutely in line with the chassis holes. But because I, I'm springing a couple of axles, I can set the um, the the uh, axle holes relative to these so these these are this is this is the most important bit um they they're linked together and in the past i've had a uh, coupling rods of, of different lengths where i've had to remake them i've had to repair them i've had to sleeve them uh, but these were absolutely spot on to each other so I, they're um we're ready now to start doing the basic chassis